In this video, I'm going to set up my bullet journal for March. As International Women's Day is going to happen in March, I decided to go with women as my theme. A long time ago, I purchased a beautiful pack of stickers and printed vellum papers for this theme. And I have been impatiently waiting to finally be able to use those. This entire set is called Les Femmes, the women, and displays women in their beautiful diversity. Besides the vellum sheets, I will mostly make use of the stickers that are in box shape and originally made for the Happy Planner, I think. But when I saw them, I thought they were so beautiful and special that I decided to use them in my bullet journal for March. The store I purchased them from is called A Glittery Life Plans which is a small, women-owned business. As much as I believe that true liberation will never be possible within the boundaries of the capitalist system, I think it is still important to support each other with the means that we have right now, like for example supporting small, women-owned businesses. To celebrate the International Women's Day, I decided to make a spread that I have never made before, and probably will never make again, which is a sort of cover slash quote page. For this I chose one of the vellum prints, which is called La Femme en Charpe, the woman with a scarf. The other side of the spread is reserved for a quote, but at this point of the setup I hadn't decided yet with which quote I wanted to go with. To keep the aesthetics consistent, I use, besides the stickers of the pack, vellum paper and brown craft paper for decoration. I have done over some months now, I like to place the calendar sticker in the center of the page so that the vertical calendar is separated into two sections which can be used for two different things such as private and professional matters. Highlighting the weekends is not only a good opportunity to add more color to the spread, but it also helps to visualize the weeks. I like to have my habit trackers to have everything in one spot. Next to the calendar, I like to have another page for things concerning the entire month that I call Overview Page. And the following double spread will be a brain dump page and my spending tracker that I like to divide in categories that I generally spend money on, including a section where I can summarize everything at the end of the month.
I thought that the colors that I chose for my markers not only fit the general atmosphere of the Les Femmes theme well, but also look very well next to each other. So I thought I might create this line of dots that I saw many other artists do. However, this was the first time I was doing this and I think I made them way too small and placed them way too close next to each other, so later I will fix that. For the weekly spreads I like to create tabs, which is another great opportunity to bring in some colors, but at the same time is also very functional. For the weeks I use the Alistair method, so I create a column for each day, and whenever a new task comes to my mind I can write it down right next to all the columns and then place a bullet right into the column of the day where I want the task to be done. In my last setups I always included a header for tasks right here at the top, but I do have the problem that the length of one notebook page is often not enough for all the tasks that I have in a week, so I decided to get rid of the header to win a bit more space. I mean, a header does look nice, but in the end I know anyway that this is my tasks page. And I always want to go with the more functional option. Besides that, I think that not having headers make my weekly spreads a little more minimal, which I think is a good thing. The right side of the spread is going to be room for notes, and I decided that instead of having a notes header over there, I will just have a header indicating which week we're in and what the dates of this week are. All my weekly spreads look basically the same, just the decorational elements make them look different from each other. This is a sheet of my washi book, by the way, which is how I store my washi tapes in a way that they're always accessible to me. I just have a small book with samples of all the washi tape that I own, to have them all at a glance and easily accessible. The booklet is disc bound, which means that I can remove and put in sheets as I want. If you're interested to see more about this, or even how to make such a washi book, you can check out my video tutorial on this that is linked below for you. And now it is time to talk a little bit about what the International Women's Day is. It is important to understand that it is not like the Mother's Day where you gift some flowers to your mom and maybe give her an extra long hug. The 8th of March is dedicated to the fight for the emancipation of women. In German, which is my first language, there is a better way to express this struggling aspect of the meaning of this day. We call it Frauenkampftag, which can loosely be translated as Women's Fighting Day. This day was invented in the early 20th century by women who were socialist feminists in the Western world, meaning Europe and the US. At that time, there existed women's movements from different socioeconomic milieus, and I want to point out that the International Women's Day was made by female socialists. In 1909, a Women's Day was held by the Socialist Party of America in New York, and from there this idea made it across the Atlantic to Central Europe, where it was adapted and became a regular thing. The socialist feminist Clara Zetkin, for example, was an important figure to establish the International Women's Day. At first, the objective of the day was the struggle for women's suffrage, because at this point we're still before World War I, and in many European countries women did not have the right yet to vote. But of course, over the decades, the focus of the International Women's Day changed according to the current themes in the women's fight for equality. For example, while back in the times women fought for their right to vote, we have now achieved this right today, 
And one of the many remaining important topics on female equality is equal pay. After the idea of an International Women's Day first came up, there have been a few different dates where the event has been celebrated. I believe the reason why it was finally settled on March 8th is because in 1917, there has been a huge strike of female workers in the Russian Empire, which actually sparked the first episode of the Russian Revolution. Only in 1977, the UN then officially declared the 8th March to be the International Women's Day. While I finish up my last spread, which is my one line a day or daily review or diary spread, I want to point out that feminist movements back in the time when the Women's Day was invented and even the socialist feminists in Europe and North America usually did not include non-white women into their struggle of emancipation. This is important to keep in mind when thinking of the history of feminism, and especially when thinking of how we want to proceed with a feminist struggle in the present and in the future. The emancipation of women from the dominance of patriarchy encompasses all women, whether black, white, brown, or trans. And with that thought in mind, I chose my quote for the cover page. At first I thought I might go with a quote from Clara Zetkin, a German socialist feminist from the early 20th century that I have mentioned earlier, but then I decided to go with Kianga Yamata Taylor, who is an African-American socialist feminist and professor. This is not the sort of socialist quote that I originally wanted that connects the oppression of women directly with the capitalist system, but it resonated a lot with me. I not only dislike the idea that women are inferior, but also the idea that women are better in certain ways or that there are pressures in ways that men aren't, because that still means that women are different, that women are the other. In my opinion, this othering is the basis for discrimination. And therefore I like the quote, we reject pedestals, queenhood, and walking 10 paces behind, to be recognized as human, levelly human, is enough. On top of that, when I was browsing feminist quotes, I found a lot of things that I do not consider feminist or empowering at all, on the contrary. I didn't want superficial, potentially sexist and categorizing topics like beauty and looks. I didn't want anything victimizing about rape. I didn't want anything about female heads of companies because in my opinion these are the elite and they do not represent the majority of women in the world. And I especially didn't want anything about female superpowers because that, again, in my opinion, is othering women from men. This quote by Kianga Yamada Taylor, in my opinion, counteracts topics like these perfectly and points out the essence of what feminism is actually about. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like to help fight the algorithm. And I wish you all a march in feminist solidarity.